So we're coming down the hill here into Battery Downs. Judging by first impressions, and no, I haven't found the sign yet, but uh, this is probably a three inch battery. These were designed to uh, prevent mine layers and torpedo boats from getting in close and in this case also to protect uh, the naval ammunition pier over there. This is probably a searchlight station. Coincidence rangefinder for battery downs. Oh, okay, there you go. So there'd be another another one of those down further and then by triangulating between the two you could determine the range of position to a hostile vessel. There's Port Townsend, Fort Warden, Point Wilson. And the white dot over there is the ferry, and the little white dot on the hill next to it is Fort Casey. And there's the sign. Two three-inch guns on pedestal mounts, range of five miles, designed to fire at fast moving light armored ships, 15 pounds, 15 pound shells, on pintle mounts. This is very similar to the uh, battery just uh, west of Fort Casey, which would have also been a three inch pencil mount for the same purpose. The Endicott era coastal defense projects were actually a nationwide endeavor and so you saw the same plans repeated over and over again. They basically came up with something that worked and built it repeatedly with slight modifications to suit magazine, storeroom, probably another magazine. Three inch shells are typically uh, yeah, the magazine are typically uh, single piece Whereas the, the big 10 inchers up there had separate powder and shell loading, this would have been just one shell similar to a conventional bullet, though quite a large one. Hence, you don't have separate powder and shell rooms, you just have magazines, one for each gun. Something that's always kind of fascinated me about this era, the so we're talking the early early steam era, pre dreadnought, uh, essentially civil war through. I suppose it's just best by U.S. civil war because not the only civil war going on in the world at the time. Anyway, through 
Spanish-American War, beginning of World War I, is how lightly armored the ships were. Armed, I should say. Uh, whereas, you know, in the late Civil War era, you might have had a ship with several hundred muzzle-loading cannons. Just a few years later, a equal ship of the line might only have four breech-loading guns. And uh, you see that here with these, uh, with these forts as well. The main gun line was six, 10, or 12 inch guns supported by a handful of three inch. Trees are creaking pretty bad over there. Handful of three inch guns. So it's just interesting to me that for that brief moment in history, very light armaments were considered effective. Don't exactly know what to make of that. Should have one more battery down here, just a little bit, and then we'll head back up and uh, find where we parked mom. You know, this is a little more of the Fort Casey kind of design um, with the open field, sort of open field behind the battery, as opposed to uh, the trenches that we saw at the other guns here at Flagler. And actually, this is very reminiscent of Fort Whitman. Have to, have to look up the design similarities between the batteries here and the batteries at Whitman. Battery Callwell. Four six inch disappearing carriage guns. Well, that's probably why it looks like Fort Whitman, is because it's almost exactly the same design as Fort Whitman. So, if you want to know what Fort Whitman looked like before it became completely overgrown, this is it. And minus a lot of graffiti. So almost certainly would have been the fire control bunker in the center of the four gun battery. Possibly fire control plotting room. Those were often telephone equipment boxes. These were somewhat newer forts, built after the turn of the century. A little step down here, I don't see that at Whitman. But again, these are just small tweaks that were made either through experience, you notice how many drains there are here, so they probably had some drainage problems. 
And so they just play with the design a little bit to match learned experience and uh, site specific concerns. Stick this in somewhere, but it's another one of those fancy uh, water water bibs. This one's set into the wall here at Battery Caldwell. So uh, for all the places we might have wondered what those little round half circular holes were for, I guess now we know. This is Battery Landsboro. The, uh, another three inch quick firing battery. But this one actually has the guns in place. You can see this is the, uh, the same design as Battery Downs. Uh, just repeated a little bit taller this time. Yeah. So those are those are not the correct canisters for this. Those are 155 millimeter or six inch. The guns here were three inch, but you know, every little bit's interesting. More 155 powder canisters. Uh. And then this is a three inch quick firing gun. See the uh, dropping breech block here, probably related to this mechanism somehow. I have to wonder if the this is all one casting or if this piece, the barrel is cast separately from this mounting and then somehow shrunk together. Recoil tubes here. Border Patrol, really? <laughs> okay, whatever. A couple of ships coming into Seattle there. So coming around to the other side here. Got the uh, second gun, which still has its uh, gun shield in place. Water Levette Arsenal 1907, 2,693 pounds, number 17 CMA. Made in Waterlevet, New York, just north of Troy. Slightly different gun. What's that? Okay, I'll look at it. So this one has a horizontal swinging screw breech, mid veil teal, I don't know what that means, a uh, single recoil compensator, there's a direct vision sight telescope mount, a little bit different mount, different gun shield. See, this is about a inch and inch and three quarter, two inch thick gun shield. Not very large, but would probably stop anything. Eh, I think it's about a three inch. 
be a headache of the century though. I want to go take a look at the uh, the muzzle on that other on that first one. See if we can puzzle out what it is. Sadly, this one does not have any muzzle cap markings. That's unfortunate. Another coincidence range finder. So again, uh, recurring design elements. We saw this over at Battery Barns. Telephone box there. Would have provided range finding information to the battery there. And that's the beach. You see this? This is me being really lazy. So this is Battery Bankhead, which was the uh, the mortars. There were two sets of four mortars that went in those holes right there. And then uh, the because the fire control data all would have come from someplace else into the little building in front but it's cold I'm hungry and so we're doing the short short version of it we'll come back next time and poke around in those uh, those rooms there but just for the sake of completeness that's battery bank head and I'm missing one battery that I didn't quite get to this trip but gives me a reason to come back. So, there we go.